Item 2, the Tobacco Control Advertisements and Sale Amendment Bill. Second reading. Minister for Health. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister for Health, I beg to move that the bill be now read a second time. Sir, tobacco use, including smoking, is a significant public health problem in Singapore. Among risk factors, tobacco use is the second highest contributor to ill health and premature death in Singapore. More than 2,000 Singaporeans die prematurely from smoking-related diseases each year. The social cost of smoking in Singapore has been conservatively estimated to be at least $600 million a year in direct health care costs as well as in lost productivity. Singapore's long-standing public health objective is to promote and move towards a tobacco-free society. To this end, over the years, Singapore has adopted a comprehensive, multi-pronged approach to, to tobacco control with the aim, amongst others, of A, preventing or reducing the opportunities for non-smokers, particularly youths, to pick up smoking, B, encouraging existing smokers to quit, and C, encouraging Singaporeans to adopt a tobacco-free lifestyle. Over the years, measures adopted as part of our multi-pronged approach have included banning smoking in certain public places, restricting tobacco advertising and promotion, introducing mandatory graphic health warnings on tobacco product packaging, banning the use of misleading descriptors such as mild and light in tobacco products, and also imposing taxes. As a result of these efforts, smoking rates in Singapore fell from 23% in 1977 to 19% in 1984, and further to 12.6% in 2004. However, in recent years, the decline in smoking rates has been harder to sustain. The smoking rates have been fluctuating between 12 and 14 per cent in the last 10 years with no clear pattern of continuous decline. More than one in five men smoke daily and our, and our male smoking rate is higher than that in Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom and the United States. Clearly, we need to do more to stem tobacco use among Singaporeans with a view to denormalizing the use of tobacco products and bringing overall smoking rates to a level that is as low as possible. To this end, over the years, we have been studying best practices in other countries, as well as the recommendations adopted under the auspices of the World Health Organization, WHO, with respect to the implementation of the Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, or the FCTC, which Singapore is a party to. We have consulted extensively on new tobacco control measures, which include banning displays of tobacco products at the retail point of sale, increasing the size of graphic health warnings, raising the minimum age for tobacco, and a prohibition on flavoured tobacco products. The ban on point of sale tobacco product displays took effect in August 2017, with the aim of reducing exposure of non-smokers, especially youths, to the advertising effects of such displays and discouraging impulse purchases. Slightly over a year ago, this parliament also passed legislative changes to, to increase the minimum legal age for the purchase, use, possession, sale, and supply of tobacco products. Excise duty on tobacco products was raised by 10% last year to further discourage Singaporeans' consumption of tobacco products. We are now continuing with our multi-pronged approach to tobacco control by introducing a measure that the FCTC guidelines call on parties to consider adopting, and that is the standardized packaging of tobacco products. The design of tobacco products and packaging is used to promote tobacco products among adults and the young alike. Key elements of tobacco packaging include brand imagery, logos, colors, and of course the pack design. Cigarettes packs serve as a five second commercial whenever the pack is drawn from the shelf or one's pocket, held in the palm of a hand, or placed in full view on the table. Independent research and reviews of tobacco industry documents have found that packaging is an effective marketing medium that helps to build direct relationships between the tobacco company and the consumer through possession and use. Packaging innovation, design, and value packaging are used not only to distinguish packed products from competitors, but also to promote the product, communicate brand values, and target specific consumer groups. Evidence suggests that the appeal of branded packaging also acts as one of the factors encouraging children and young adults to experiment with tobacco and to establish 
and thereafter continue the habit of smoking. Standardized packaging of tobacco products generally refers to A. The strict regulation of promotional aspects of tobacco packaging. B. The standardization of packaging elements. This includes removing all logos, colors, brand images, and promotional information on packaging, other than brand names and product names, which includes the variants, displayed in a standard color and font style. It is often accompanied by a third element, namely the incorporation of prominent mandatory health warnings. Singapore is not the first country to consider introducing standardized packaging of tobacco products. Australia introduced standardized packaging in December 2012. According to a study commissioned by the Australian government between December 2012 and September 2015, standardized packaging was responsible for reducing the country's smoking prevalence by 0.55 percentage points. This amounted to about 25% of the 2.2 percentage point decline in smoking prevalence during that period. In 2018, a study conducted by the French Department of Public Health found that 1 million daily smokers in the country quit the habit between 2016 and 2017. This decline, which was described by the French authorities as, and I quote, historic, unquote, was attributed to a raft of tobacco control measures implemented in 2016, including standardized packaging. Other countries have also moved towards standardized packaging. The UK, Ireland, New Zealand and Norway have fully implemented standardized packaging measures. Thailand, Hungary, Saudi Arabia, Slovenia and Uruguay are at varying stages of implementing standardized packaging, while Canada recently concluded a public consultation on the draft specifications on the proposed measure. Burkina Faso, Georgia and Romania have passed enabling legislation for standardized packaging but have yet to announce the date for full implementation. Other countries considering standardized packaging at the legislative or governmental level include Brazil, Chile, Ecuador, Panama, South Africa, Sri Lanka and Mauritius. The role that branded packaging plays in encouraging children and young adults to experiment with tobacco and to establish and continue a habit of smoking is one that is of particular concern in Singapore, where more than 90% of smokers initiate smoking before the age of 21. A local study carried out by HPB, Health Promotion Board, to assess Singaporeans' perception of current and plainer cigarette product packaging found that the current cigarette pack designs influence both smokers and non-smokers' perception towards the various attributes of the cigarette packs. Attractive brand designs were associated, pack designs rather, were associated with high quality cigarettes and increased likelihood of attracting youths to try such products. Amongst a significant minority of non-smokers, perceived pack attractiveness was associated with the intention to try smoking. In contrast, plainer or standardized packs were generally seen as less attractive compared to current cigarette packs. HPB's findings from other local studies also indicated that packs with darker colors and at least 75% graphic warnings were considered by Singaporeans to be least attractive and perceived to be more harmful to health. Health warnings on packs with at least 75% graphic warnings and darker colours were also more noticeable compared to packs with just a 50% graphic warning. Between 2010 and 2018, MOH engaged in a continuous process of reviewing and evaluating a substantial body of international research related to tobacco product marketing and standardised packaging. The Ministry has also received a range of feedback, comments and concerns with respect to the possible introduction of standardized packaging over the years. All of these have been carefully considered and addressed in detail in two papers published by my Ministry in support of and in response to the public consultations carried out in 2018. Ultimately, Mr. Speaker, our final assessment of the available international and local evidence is this that the introduction of standardized packaging in Singapore, taken together with an enlarged graphic health warnings, or what we call the SP proposal in this bill, will be effective in achieving five public health objectives, namely, first, reducing the attractiveness of tobacco products, secondly, eliminating the effects of tobacco packaging as a form of advertising and promotion, third, 
reducing the ability of tobacco packaging to mislead about the harmful effects of smoking. Fourth, increasing the noticeability and effectiveness of mandatory graphic health warnings. And finally, better informing smokers and non-smokers of the risk associated with tobacco use. These public health objectives in turn, both taken separately, individually and also in conjunction together, with other existing tobacco control measures are expected to contribute to achieving Singapore's broader tobacco control aims, which include discouraging non-smokers from even picking up smoking, encouraging existing smokers to quit, and ultimately encouraging Singaporeans to adopt a tobacco-free lifestyle. Ultimately, the government expects that these will lead to positive future public health outcomes, such as reduced smoking prevalence. It is in light of the foregoing that the government considers the introduction of standardized packaging together with enlarged graphic health warnings to be justified from a public health perspective. Mr. Speaker, allow me now to highlight the provisions, the key provisions of the bill that has been proposed. First, Clause 3 of the bill repeals the existing Section 17 and 17A of the Act and substitutes a new Section 17 which enables the implementation of standardized packaging for tobacco products. Under the new Section 17, all tobacco products and the packaging or labeling of tobacco products must comply with every requirement prescribed in subsidiary legislation, including requirements as to size, appearance, design, health warning, and also other information to be stated. Also, tobacco products and their packaging or labeling must not bear any trademark, term, descriptor, figurative or other sign, feature, scent or sound that is prescribed as prohibited or promotes the tobacco product by any means that is false, misleading, deceptive or likely to create an erroneous impression about its characteristics, health effects, hazards or emissions. The latter is in line with the prohibition under the current Section 17A of the Act. The import into Singapore and the distribution sale offer for sale or possession for sale in Singapore of such non-compliant tobacco products will be made an offence. In addition, Clause 6 of the Act amends Section 37 to empower the Minister of Health to make regulations with respect to the size, appearance and design of tobacco products and their packaging and labelling, health warnings and also other information to be displayed on such products including the trademarks, the terms, the descriptors, features, scents and sounds that I've mentioned which will be prohibited in relation to tobacco products and their packaging and labelling. As the papers published by my ministry in support of and response to the public consultations conducted in 2018 have stated, our proposal for Singapore's standardised packaging measures will comprise two parts. The first will include the removal of all colours logos, brand images and promotional material on the retail packaging of tobacco products. All permitted information such as brand names and product names will be required to be displayed in a standard colour and a standard font style. The colour, size, shape, opening and finish of the retail packaging will also be standardised as will aspects of the appearance of the tobacco product. Secondly, the minimum size of the mandatory graphic health warnings will be increased from the existing 50% to 75% of all specified tobacco product packaging surfaces. Following the passage of this bill, should this bill be passed, subsidiary legislation will be made to implement the SP proposal, which will then replace the current tobacco control of advertisements and sale labelling regulations 2012. One of the key features of the SP proposal is the prohibition on the use of any branding and that includes the logo, the colours and other features associated with the brand itself. Advertising as well as promotional elements from being displayed on tobacco product packaging. This is the case except for brand names and product names that will be required to be displayed in the standard font and colour as I mentioned. There have been concerns expressed that this prohibition would unduly impinge on the industry's intellectual property rights and would not be consistent with international IP law. Let me address this point. The government maintains its strong commitment to the protection of IP rights. It is also our view that the SP proposal is consistent with Singapore's international obligations in relation to international intellectual property rights. Tobacco companies' trademarks, 
do not give them absolute rights to use their trademarks. Those rights are subject to legitimate government regulation. In this regard, it is also worth noting that a dispute settlement panel of the World Trade Organization, WTO, has found that Australia's introduction of standardized packaging measures was not inconsistent with international obligations under various WTO agreements, including the Agreement on Trade-Related Aspects of Intellectual Property Rights, or TRIPS, and the Technical Barriers to Trade, TBT, agreement. The measures proposed in Australia were not dissimilar to what is being proposed in this bill. Nonetheless, as a further assurance to rights holders that the SP proposal will not affect their ability to otherwise maintain and enforce their IP rights, Clause 7 of the bill introduces new provisions which will make it clear that the implementation of standardized packaging in Singapore will not affect the registrability and registration of tobacco-related trademarks and designs under the Trademarks Act and the Registered Designs Act, respectively. Clause 2 of the bill inserts a new definition of trademark to clarify that the term has the same meaning as that in the Trademarks Act. As mentioned, Clause 6 confers on the Minister the power to make subsidiary legislation setting out the details of the packaging measures. The key specifications were set out in the public consultation paper on the SP proposal, which was published in February last year. In particular, it was made clear that the proposed measures would include standardizing both the internal and also the external services of all retail packages, standardizing the shape and dimensions of the retail package, standardizing the branding and product information allowed on retail packaging, including location, typeface, colors, and size. We recognize and acknowledge that the introduction of standardized packaging will have an impact on tobacco and other related industries. Nevertheless, the positive objectives as well as the public health outcomes that the SP proposal is expected to achieve warrants its introduction. Should this bill be passed to facilitate smooth implementation of the new measures, we will be meeting with manufacturers, importers, distributors and retailers of cigarettes, cigars and other similar tobacco products retailed in Singapore to brief them on the proposed specifications for the standardized layouts for tobacco product packaging and other operational issues. Sufficient notice will also be given to the industry of the finalized specifications and prior to the new requirements taking effect, manufacturers and retailers will be permitted to start producing and selling standardized packs alongside existing packs. This sell-through period will allow retailers to clear their existing stocks of branded tobacco products and ease the implementation burden. Next, I'll touch on several other amendments in the bill. Clause 5 of the bill amends Section 34 of the Act to allow compoundable offences to be compounded for a sum not exceeding the lower of one half of the amount of the maximum fine prescribed for the offence, or $5,000. The latter amount is increased from the current 2000, which has been an amount that has not been raised since the Act was first enacted more than 25 years ago. This proposed increase aims to regain parity with similar provisions in other legislation and also to ensure that the deterrent remains effective. Clause 4 of the Bill amends Section 18 of the Act to increase the maximum fines for an offence under that section from 5000 to 10000 for a first offence and from 10,000 to 20,000 for a person who has any previous qualifying conviction. This aligns the penalties under Section 18 with the maximum fines for similarly serious offences pertaining to the importation, distribution, retail and possession of prohibited tobacco products and also imitation products, imitation tobacco products under Sections 15 and 16 of the Act, respectively. Mr. Speaker, sir, smoking is a major cause of ill health and premature death in Singapore. The government is committed to reducing the serious harm that tobacco products cause to individual Singaporeans and to the nation's public health. Our long-standing public health objective is to promote and move towards a tobacco-free society. And it is to this end that we have adopted consistently a multi-pronged approach to tobacco control. We further recognize that continuing efforts in tobacco control are necessary to sustain the declines in smoking rates and also bring the overall smoking rate to a level that is as low as possible. Based on our review of the evidence and the feedback, MOH is of the view that there are convincing grounds to believe that the SP proposal is likely to achieve its public health objectives 
and ultimately it is likely to operate alongside other existing and possible future tobacco control measures to contribute towards promoting public health through the reduction of the prevalence of smoking in Singapore and thereby constitute a significant step towards Singapore becoming a tobacco-free society. When introduced, the SP proposal will form part of a comprehensive suite of tobacco control measures in Singapore. It will operate alongside other existing and possibly future tobacco control measures to contribute towards our government's obligations towards the, under the FCTC and towards reducing prevalence of smoking in Singapore. This would constitute a significant step towards Singapore's long-standing public health objective of promoting and moving towards a tobacco-free society. I seek members' support for this bill. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move.